hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is shabest if you're new here don't forget to like share subscribe and welcome basically welcome back today we're going to talk of a very a rather sensitive topic it's been a very emotionally draining week uh, emotionally and physically actually um, for those people that are not um, for those people that are not aware of what's going on especially in Nigeria basically we have we've been having like this protest the youth protest and protesting police brutality basically like a special unit of the police force this brutality issue has been going on for years i feel like we've gotten to the point where we've lived with it for so long and it's become a daily norm it's become something that has become so it's been something that has become so normal we've we've adapted so much to it that it, it had become normal to us but then it got to the point where people were like okay enough of this because this has been going on for years, we need a change, um, police, total police reform, and then this ban SARS. Okay, so SARS is a special anti-robbery squad that is a unit, a special unit of the police force. So basically, these people are supposed to be in charge of robbery and situations like that. I feel like they've gone rogue to the point where they do whatever it is they want they harass people especially young people so if you're dressed in a certain way or you have a certain type of phone iphone to be precise they they get so angry they get i don't know um i've seen i've actually seen videos where um one of the officers was telling somebody that oh i've been working in the police force for over 15 years and I've never been able to buy to afford this kind of phone. So imagine if people that are supposed to protect you on the road have that kind of mentality and they, they go as far as killing people and nothing nothing will be done about it. Like they are, there's no consequence for whatever it is that they've done. And this issue is it, it became normal to us because for me, I would not like me personally, it became normal to me. So, um, before that was before I left, anyways. I've not had a personal, personal um, experience with SARS per se, but I remember, I don't know if it was last year when I went home or the year before that. I remember when I went home, and <laughs> It's a funny story. I was walking to the market actually. There's a big market that's close to my house. I was walking to the market and then all of a sudden from nowhere like this. I just saw like they, they come in like vans and this kind of hillocks um trucks and then there was just this black hillocks just drove into the street like if you see the way people were running me that kind of situation, you know, they ask questions, you pick your slippers, run too. So me, I, I just started running as well. I didn't bother to wait to ask, oh, what's going on? Or why are people running? Eh, you run first, ask questions later. So me, I was running. And then I think I'd almost gotten home. And then I, I, was, I, was, I was asking somebody, I'm like, why are we running? What's going on? Because in my mind, I actually thought they were robbers. Because the way they were dressed, first of all, the way these people were dressed. Oh my God. So they're like, Oh no, that they're not robbers, they are SARS. I'm like, wait, SARS, like as in police. They're like, yeah. I said, so why are we running? I said, ah, so if you not run, if they catch you, they feel catch you, bundle you, they don't care what it is that you have done. You've not done anything actually, you can just be walking or just catch you, bundle you. And two, it can go two ways. You either come out alive or they don't even find you at all. So the protest this year actually started um, in the beginning of October, right? So there was a video that was circulating of uh, of a guy that was shot in Delta State and SARS was shot by SARS actually in Delta State and his car was taken away by the same members of SARS actually. So that that video was going around and it was very difficult to watch. So 
that was i feel like that was how the whole protest thing started i'm not exactly sure but i think that was how the whole protest started and then people started protesting so there were little little groups that started at first it wasn't so much like a lot of people were not coming out at first but then different cases like started coming out of people missing or people that have been arrested by SARS and they've not been able to find them they've been missing for there were some for months for years and different different there were so many stories that were coming up of the same issue with SARS so actually people started getting aware of okay this is what's going on because even in Nigeria there are people that are not aware of what's going on of how serious this thing is so then people started coming out and then the protest groups started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and all the while there was no time there was no account where they were being violent or anything this was this throughout it was a peaceful protest the times when tongue started hijacking this protest and then it would get a little violent between the protesters and the thugs but it was nothing it was nothing really serious or because yes most of the thugs were apprehended by the protesters and most of them got beaten and then they were taken to the hospital and stuff like that <laughs> but then there was the lucky one which from all the all the areas of all, all the groups of protesters they, i feel like the lucky ones the the people protesting in lucky especially lucky target they were the most peaceful ones so on um i think it was the um on towards the end of the month i don't know who gave the order for the army to shoot at the lucky protesters so I was on someone's life that day when the thing was happening and you could hear the gunshots they were shooting at these protesters peaceful protesters and it was night it was dark so there's a way the target is so the army they were shooting at them and then they had nowhere to run so they couldn't run and we according to some eyewitnesses there were people that there were dead bodies that were taken away by the by the army and then there were some of them that were taking there were a lot of injured people that were taken to different hospitals and that night was just crazy it was crazy it was it was something that i never expected would happen but then then again it's nigeria i don't want to say i'm not surprised because these people did nothing wrong they were just protesting for their right, for what it is that they deserve. A better country where you are not profiled by how you are dressed or what kind of gadget you are using or what kind of car you are driving. The car you are driving can get you killed in Nigeria. How crazy is that? So the lucky one was the one that really, really, really affected a lot of people because they were just they're protesting and then the army came and opened fire directly at these protesters so even up till now we're not sure how many people have died there are the numbers online but it's not something that people like the people saying something different other people are saying something different there's still people missing from that day so we're not even sure how many people have died how many people are injured how many people are missing but it's just really, really crazy that this kind of thing can happen in 2020. And we supposedly live in a democratic country. <sighs> but I feel like we just have to pray. Yes, some people say Nigeria is one of the most, like, one of the most religious country we pray all the time. But then there's nothing else, apart from putting in the work, there's nothing else that we can do. Like, pray. Like, I don't feel like there's too much prayer. There's anything. Your home, you, in your home country, actually, you feel, you live in fear. And imagine going out and you don't know if this person is going to make it back home at the end of the day. That's, that's the issue, that's the main point. Because 
for us living abroad, people might say, okay, we, because we are not there, we don't really have the experience, we don't experience it as much. Yes, that's, that's true. But then I have family back home, I have friends, I have people back home. So imagine that's not, you're not scared that this person might die by accident or, or this person might get robbed and then maybe get shot by robbers. No, you're scared that this person might die in the hands of the police. Do you know how? That I don't know how people actually people that have actually had experiences with it. I I really cannot say okay, this is how they feel. And I actually know people personally that have had experiences with with SARS, and it's it trust me, it's traumatizing. Those are the people that made it alive, right? Because it, there there are two ways to this thing: dead or alive. There is no in between. So if people are coming out to actually protest which is our right and then because i know i'm just rambling with this video <laughs> but i it took a while before i decided to do this video i was not sure if i wanted to do it because yeah a lot of people have videos up about it but then i decided to do it anyways for a lot of people for a lot of people i know that this affected them a lot like a lot of people affected them mentally i had to like log out of twitter because you you keep seeing the stories you keep seeing videos of people getting shot people that have been killed and this is not this is this is not even like old videos this is like recent videos of protesters being shot and killed unarmed protesters being shot and killed by the same people that are supposed to protect us so it's it's been an ongoing thing and i feel like okay now that they've they've got it has gotten to this point where they feel like okay they've done something that will make these people back down a bit or whatnot and yes i know that people are scared and rightly so i politics is actually not my thing to be honest i don't really but then this was never political to begin with it was just people wanting to leave you want to go out and you know that okay at the end of the day i'll get back home and i will not be gone down like a dog on the street this is just people wanting to survive as hard and as difficult as that country is everything is difficult everything is and this affected everybody even with the whole um corona thing and then people were still struggling to survive and then police were still killing people like you didn't even die from corona like you're dying from police brutality that's how stupid this sounds like you it's you're even safer in another man's country than your own home the people that they've been feeling a little bit down about it and it's normal honestly you're, you you should feel that because it's mentally draining there's no way you see those kind of videos and they don't affect you in one way or the other the best thing is just to log out just take your time and log out on social media and try to focus on your mental health which is not something that we africans talk about a lot but it's really important for me i mean i can say that i wait five days I think I'm not even sure, but they, I just didn't want to be online. I just didn't want to see those videos. I just didn't want to um, to be in that space where I would see all of those those videos. Where I just wanted to come out here to talk about it and. honestly ask this question that i've actually not been able to find an answer to which way forward what's the way forward for nigeria what's where are we actually heading to people are saying oh maybe the youth should form their own party and stuff but then another thing is it's not going to be easy because these people with power are going to they're going to find every possible way to try to thwart whatever that the youth they're trying to create like a few days ago now it was the whole tribalism thing and people were 
they were fighting among themselves about the Yoruba's Igbo. I was like, that's not the problem here. That's th people should look past all of that. This is just another way to cause division. And that should not be our main focus. The main focus is what it is that we want, which they said, okay, yes, we've SARS has been disbanded, but then they're still on the street harassing people, beating up people, and doing whatever it is that they do on a daily basis. So you cannot keep lying to people. You've been saying that, oh, they disbanded them in 2017, 2018, 2019, and this is 2020. There's no executive order to that effect that, oh, they've actually been disbanded. And yes, we have a president, I think, I don't know, because at this point, maybe the whole country is on a cruise. But regardless of what happens, I just feel like in your own little corner, just say a prayer for the country because right now I feel like it's only God that we have. We have only God to talk to. We <laughs> we, we cannot do this on our own. And it's, it's something that, and it's a fight that is going to be long. It's going to take a long time. I feel like I was one of those people that would always say, oh, change will never come. When Nigeria is, mm, we're just going to be like this. So sorry to those families that lost loved ones or friends or one person or the other. It's my condolences to them. It must be really difficult. I can't even imagine what it is that they're going to do. But I just hope that people that have died will not die in vain and a change will actually come. Hopefully. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment below. <laughs> I don't know. Don't forget to leave a comment below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.